everyone. Um, today I'm going to show you how to create a, a Scratch teacher account, also how to add students to your teacher account, and then lastly how to create a studio in your teacher account. Uh, so first of all, the website I am at right now is scratch.mit.edu slash educators. Um, so this is where we're going to start. Um, right on here there is a button that says teacher account. So you're going to click on there to create one. And you're going to request an account. So you're going to create your own username, create your own password. Uh, they do not want you to be using um, any... Uh, your username, you know, any um, markers that tell who you are, like your real name. Um, I use my real name for mine, and it works just fine, but I know that that's something they don't want you to be doing. Anyways, uh, you'll go through these steps of creating a teacher account here. They're going to send you an email. You have to make sure that you confirm your education uh, email to get your education account. Sometimes it can take 24 to 48 hours for your teacher account to actually become active. So, um, even though after you've created this, it's going to say, you know, your teacher account is in the process. So you can still just go back and still sign in with the username that you created and the password you created. And you just won't have a teacher account. It still creates a Scratch account that you can start using right away. So most of you, some of you might have teacher accounts already. Some of you might have not. Um, that's the step to make it a teacher account. You might have to make a brand new account that is a teacher account, um, even if you have a regular account. So once you have a teacher account, it will look different because when you log in, you will have this purple bar across the top, and it'll say teacher account. Um, then when you get in here, you can create your classes. So the tricky part about this is if you've already created an account, your kids have already created accounts without you setting them up through the teacher account. Um, as of right now, there's not really a way <clears throat> to relink them to your teacher account. I think that's something that might be coming in the Scratch 3.0, which comes in January, um, so that we can have more flexibility with our classes, especially as they move from one class to the next, um, so they don't lose all of their stuff. But that will be coming later. So when you're ready to create your own class of students, you're going to click on the My Classes button. Inside here, you're going to create a new class. And then you'll create a class name. So I'm just going to call this Sample Class. If you want to, you can give it a description. You don't have to. Add your class. So here you can see my Sample Class has been added on this left-hand um, kind of toolbar. So next up, it has settings. I have the option of students, studios, and activities. So the first thing I'm going to want to do, of course, is add some students to my class. So I've tried a couple of ways. You can add all the students' information ahead of time, or you can just add um, a give a link to the students. This student sign-up link is what I encourage. Um, I have tried this adding all the students myself, and what ends up happening is, yes, it allows them to log in, but then they still have to recreate a password, um, so it doesn't really take away any work from them. It just uh, makes more work for you. So what I would suggest you use is you just click Student Sign Up Link and click Generate so that it comes up with a link and copy that link and email it to your students, uh, airdrop it or give it to the open that tab up for them using Dashboard if you wanted to. Um, you could put it if you use a class website or you use a class um, like um, any sort of class blog or anything like that. Um, easiest way is probably going to be get in dashboard, open up this, copy this, open this up for all of your kiddos at once. What they'll do is they'll, they will click join this class. So I'm going to just copy it and then we'll let you see it. So when they get here, it will say sample class. Well, of course, it will say your class, right? And the students will click get started. They're going to create their own username and password here. Now, um, our district would like for your students to use their exact same Google login information for this as they do for everything else. That way they don't lose it from year to year and everyone is consistent. So they're going to use, you know, Michael S. 0432 
um, as their username. They don't need the at sdsd2.com. And then their password will be the M period lunch code twice. So please use that same username and password here for these kiddos. I would definitely have it. Um, so here's my username. Here's my password. Have them click show password and ch double check that because if they type that wrong or they type their username wrong, it, it doesn't recognize it and then it can create problems for them to log in later. Um, I would also, once they, all right, so there's my username, here's my password, I'm not ever gonna get back into here, but um, I'm gonna click next step. They do have to go ahead and give a, a, a birth month, birth year. They have to say if they're male or female, tell them to ignore this blank box, and then they have to pick United States. All right, so now they are in here ready to go and they can click go to class and they are already linked up with you. What I would suggest at this point they do once they're in the Scratch homepage is I would have them click this star up here at the top right to bookmark this page, add it to their bookmarks. So anytime you say to get into Scratch that they can go ahead and get there quickly. Now from the teacher end, when I click on my sample class, I have one student, here it is. If I need to, I can go into account settings and I can change their password for them if they um, type it in wrong. It actually just re redirects the students to change their password again. However, you cannot have them change, change their usernames. So they have to be very careful when typing in their usernames. Third grade teachers, I would even suggest walking around and checking each of their usernames um, and passwords before letting them create their account. Um, otherwise, hopefully you catch it quickly and you can have them set up a brand new account with the correct username. Um, but it's just kind of tricky in that way. Okay, so when your students are on there, you will see them all right here. You can just add one student if you need to or create a new student sign up link. I've just found that is the easiest way, like I said, otherwise you sit here and type in all the information and then the kids log in and they have to retype in the information anyways. So it doesn't really save many steps if you try to do it ahead of time for them. Um, so next up, I wanna show you how to create a studio. So up here in my toolbar here, or menu, I've got studios. Studios are great for students to turn in their projects as we go through uh, the different lessons and so that you can see, you know, is everyone done with this project? Are we ready to move on? Or um, Also, it's an easy way for students to be able to share their projects with one another without having to share it with everyone in the world. Um, they can just share it here and see each other's stuff um, and learn from each other. They can get open their um, classmates project look inside and see um, what they did and learn from them without you know going and just searching randomly through all the scratch projects that are out there so when you're ready to click create a studio you can click new class studio and then you get to name your studios maybe you just want to do lesson one lesson two lesson three I usually give them a name of a actual project so you can see I've had a jokes on you one for the knock knock jokes it's a jump scare slideshow which is your second lesson um, we just made, some students were starting to make games, so I made a game studio. Um, the What Can You Create Project Studio is right there. So you can kind of um, make these fit the actual project that it is. I would suggest that because students would probably forget which one was lesson one, two, and three. So if I create a Jokes on You uh, studio here, I can just, I don't have to add a description. You can if you want. Add that class studio. Now I'm going to go back to the student. So let's, when they're ready, they're going to click this create. And you have to enable the flash player here. So this is going to be my joke. All right, we're just going to have him point towards the mouse pointer. Events, when clicked, and looks, he's going to say hello for two seconds. Say meow, looks, he's also going to switch costume to costume too. Okay, so here's my project. If I am finished, I'm completely ready for it. I would suggest students always put it in full screen, give it a test, green flags clicked, hello, it turns, <coughs> went to my mouse pointer, there we go. So the end, not a great project, but it'll work. When I'm all done with this, I need to make sure I have a name up here, and then I want to share this to Studio. So the first thing I have to do is click the share button, 
once it is shared, it will take me to my page that is for my project. It's my project page. This never goes away. So even if I go update this project, this page is the same. I only have to share it once in a studio. And as I update it, it'll automatically update it in the studio. I can scroll down and click on studios. I can go to the jokes on you, give it a green check mark. Once it has the green check mark, I am done, ready to go. Let's go back to the teacher view here now. So now, in Jokes on You, and I click on it, there should be a project in there. And there it is. I can, as the teacher, look at it. So there it was. <coughs> Perfect. I can see inside if I'm looking for a certain piece of coding, or maybe the kids have gotten stuck on something and I need to look at it later. If it's in the studio, I can go back and look at it, try to find their mistakes for them. Um, also, your students are going to find this pretty quickly that <laughs> they can favorite a project. Maybe they want to, uh, they found one that they really like that a, a um, fellow student created and they want to make something similar to it next time. So they might favorite it so that they can come back to it and look at it. Or they might just love the project to just kind of give them some kudos of a good job. Other options that they can do, of course, are leave comments like you've done a great job. I, I do talk about, you know, you'll know to have positive comments on your um, students. <laughs> Um, projects. Another cool thing that you can do to a project is you can see inside and then if you want to change up this project, so if I'm Julie and I found John's project, I really like it, and I want to just uh, kind of use some of the pieces of it but make it my own, I can do it's called remixing. I can go ahead and open this up, okay, click this remix button, it'll save me my own copy. So when I click remix, it'll say my joke remix. So it still gives the credit to the original my joke. Um, but it's a remix. So now I can go in here and say at the end, point in direction 90 and glide for two seconds to this place. Okay, so now that I've remixed it, I can once again share it and I'm done with it. Here it is. Here's my remix. Cool thing, it already gives credit to the person I stole it from down here. Um, and it's still called a remix. Um, but now it can be changed, and you can see him do everything he needs to do there. So I hope that is helpful to you on how to quickly create a teacher account, how to add students, um, and then how to make studios for your students to share their projects with each other um, in a kind of a safe environment. So let me know if you guys have any other questions or want any other tutorials made. Thanks.